Hey, and welcome to another tutorial. Today I wanted to take a look at a simple motor driver called the SN754410. It's a really great IC for controlling an RC car, or even a robot, because it's really cheap, easy to use, and can control DC motors in forwards or reverse. Before I get into how to set it up and get started though, I thought I'd mention why you might need one anyway. First off, the reason you don't wire a motor straight up to an Arduino is because an Arduino simply can't pass enough current to the motor to drive it properly. For this reason, you need a special servo circuit a motor driver to supply the motors with the power they need to spin. Another point is that having a separate circuit isolates the motor controller, offering it some protection from the dangerous electrical noise or spikes generated by the motors that can damage the board. One such motor driver is a H-bridge, like the IC I have today. The SN754410 is a really basic H-bridge, which is good because it's simple to understand, but it does have a few downsides. There's quite a bit of wiring, it takes up a lot of pins, and you're going to need to add in a few diodes and a capacitor, which I'll explain later. On the plus side though, the schematic is fairly straightforward. If you look at it carefully, it's pretty much symmetrical, and you can see that it has two bridges on either side of the chip. First thing to spot is that the chip requires a motor power supply in the bottom left hand corner. This should be the rated voltage supply of the motors. Then in the upper right hand corner is the logic supply, which should go directly to the 5 volt output of the Arduino. Be sure to check if your motors can run at 5 volts and less than 500 milliamps. Pins 4 and 5 then, and the pins directly opposite them, 13 and 12, all go to ground. And now for the motors. For the first motor, I've hooked it up to the left side of the chip. 1-2-E-N is the enable pin, which is simply an on and off for the motor. 1-Y and 2-Y are for both the motor terminals. Finally, 1-A and 2-A are the motor logic pins, which will be connected to the digital pins on the Arduino, allowing directional control. The wiring for the second motor is mirrored on the right side of the chip. Again, you've got the enable pin, 3-4-E-N, this time though on the bottom right hand corner. Motor terminals go to 4-Y and 3-Y, and then 4-A and 3-A are for the motor logic. By the way, don't worry about the way the motor terminals are hooked up, there's no polarity. I mentioned earlier that the motor logic pins were used for directional control, and here's a handy table showing how that works. So simply by pulling the pins high and low, you can change the direction of the motors. It's this property that you can use in your code to control which way you want your robot to go, for example. So once everything's wired up, it's almost time to switch things on. Sometimes it's necessary though to add in a capacitor to smooth out any electrical noise or sudden voltage dips. In this context, it's called a decoupling capacitor. It should be placed between power and ground close to the motor. It's fine to use anything between 10 and 100 microfarads. Next up are the diodes. The diodes are quite important because they are there to protect against the electrical noise I mentioned in the very beginning. It's properly called EMF, or electromotive force, and it's generated by the motors when it accelerates or decelerates. Inertia in the motor keeps it spinning after the power is cut, and the motor effectively becomes its own generator. This excess kickback current can then easily find its way back into the circuit and potentially cause damage. For this reason, we need something that will only allow current to flow in one direction. A diode is the perfect solution, and in this context, is known as a flyback diode. The schematic symbol for a diode looks something like this, and the grey band on these diodes indicates the cathode of the diode. If you look at the datasheet for this motor driver, it gives a good schematic showing how to wire up your diodes. Placing a diode over the motor terminals connected to power will protect the driver from over voltage, turning on when more voltage is coming from the motors than is coming from the batteries, thus the batteries will absorb the power instead. And because the diode is orientated in reverse, power cannot flow from the batteries to the motors, if it could, then power will be able to flow to the motors, bypassing the chip outputs, which could cause it to short circuit. Likewise, you're also going to need another four diodes for connecting the motor terminals to ground. They're there to protect against undervoltage when voltage from the motors is below ground. Another factor to keep in mind is the breakdown voltage of the diodes. If the voltage rating for the diode was anything less than a full battery voltage, then the battery could break down the reverse diode and just bypass it. The diodes I'm using are IN4001 diode rectifiers, and are rated for up to 50 volts. And so once the diodes are wired up, then that's really it. I've got a demo set up showing what I can do, and you can find the sample code on my GitHub repo.